Alrighty, first Fallout 4 video. I'm not even gonna lie, this is the first time I've played this game in probably two or three years. So, what better way to jump back into it than with a challenge run? So today I'm fixing to figure out, can you beat Fallout 4 with only the laser musket? I attempted to make my character look like George Washington, but uh, I'm not really good at the Fallout 4 character creator. Fun history fact, George Washington was actually a redhead. I'm going to skip the special stats for a second because I ended up changing them before I left the vault. China got the big mad and dunked on the US. I became a mole man, then a freezy pop. My son got taken away and I had to leave the vault. If you've watched any other challenge YouTubers play Fallout 4, you know just how easy it is to get out of Vault 111 without tacking any of the rad roaches. Before I left though, I had robbed a dead guy and assigned my special points for realsies this time. I went 5 in Strength, Perception, and Endurance, 1 in Charisma, 5 in Intelligence, 3 in Agility, and 4 in Luck. The original plan was to be a sniper of sorts since you have to reload after every single shot. So Perception being high would help with accuracy, and Intelligence being at 5 was to get the Science perk so I can upgrade the Laser Musket later on. After that I was blinded by the light and made my way back home. I talked to the robot and watched him murder an entire family of bugs. I got pretty bored so I decided I needed to actually go and find me a laser musket. Thankfully the developers of Fallout 4 wanted to make the first couple hours of the game as flashy as humanly possible, so they threw you a laser musket for free in the beginning set piece. I tried at first to do that mission, but the problem with the laser musket is just how quickly you burn through ammo and how little you start with. As you can see, I ran out of fusion cells during the fight with the Deathclaw. So eventually I just said fuck it, reloaded a save, and just took the laser musket and hightailed it out there like Brave Sir Robin. Brave Sir Robin ran away. No! Bravely ran away, away. I didn't! All the way to Red Rocket so I can set up a little home base for myself. My first order of business was to collect a good amount of junk to make some upgrades for the laser musket. This may be a controversial take, but I really like Fallout 4's weapon and armor modding system. The only downside to it for the purpose of this run was that a lot of gameplay footage I have is just me scavenging. I'm cutting most if not all of it, but this run took a really long time just because I was dicking around and exploring. You gotta cut me some slack here though. Like I said, this is the first time I've played Fallout 4 in a quite a long time. My next step while I was gathering material was to deal with my ammo shortage problem. There is a very simple solution for getting near infinite fusion cell ammo. I went over to Cambridge Police Station to help out the Brotherhood of Steel. There's a bunch of ghouls and I have very limited ammo, so I let Dance do most of the work. Although I did help out a bit because I knew I was going to get a resupply real soon. After that, Dance and I went over to ArcJet for some reason. That's not important. What is important is the fact that there's a bunch of synths in there. Synths use laser weapons. This means that with almost every single synth I kill, I get restocked on ammo. Now that's great and all, but it gets so much better. Towards the end of the mission, Dance gets attacked by an infinitely spawning horde of synths. This only stops when you launch the rocket in the building. So if you want infinite fusion cells, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the light show. I think I let this go on for about like 10 minutes before I set off the rocket, and in the end I wound up with over a thousand fusion cells. Not gonna lie, this made the run so much easier. And it made it a lot of fun too. After that, I hobbled my way over to Trudy's to stock up on healing supplies and more junk. Then I modded up my laser musket. I was gonna make a long range sniper musket first, so I extended the barrel, made it a 4 crank capacitor, and added a beam focuser. My next stop was a super duper mark to find me another laser musket. This is also where I learned that feral ghouls are some of the worst enemies to fight when you're using this musket. They're quick as hell so they close the distance easily while you're trying to reload. And on top of that, when they throw themselves on the ground you can easily miss your shot when you're not using vets. Meaning you have to take 5 seconds to reload and try again. I eventually cleared out the super duper mart, relived my childhood of playing Call of Duty Zombies by making a crawler, and picked up a couple laser muskets. After that I added a long scope on the beam focus musket and started working at my close range musket. The plan for that one was to give it a 4 crank capacitor and a beam splitter. 
I didn't have enough materials for that, so I found my way over to Diamond City to do some shopping. Came back, finished my creation, and finally decided to move on with the story. Since I was named George and I was only using a musket, I thought the best faction to join was the Minutemen. So I went back to Concord and took out the rest of the raiders. I had to clear out the museum again, but since I had a shit ton of ammo, I didn't really mind the extra XP. I took the power armor and tried for round two of fighting the Deathclaw. May not have been the action set piece that Todd Howard had envisioned, but eventually I killed the big lizard and sent Preston to Sanctuary. After that, I was tasked to go to Tempines Bluff to talk to the settlers there. On my way over, I met a friendly radroach. I named him Steven with a PH and let my little buddy on with his day. I really wish I could have brought him to the Corvega assembly plant, which is where the people at Temp Pines Bluff send you, but I knew that it wouldn't be safe for a little guy like him. So for this mission, I wanted to see the sniping power of my musket, so I took out as many raiders on the outside as I could without being spotted. This is something I actually did a lot in my previous playthroughs. I always found sniping in games to be very fun, especially this mission in Fallout 4, but you don't really get many options to do that after the fact, because sitting around in slow paced action doesn't really sell well. Eventually I cleared out the outside of the plant and made my way inside where I was spotted almost immediately. I just decided to embrace the chaos and use my split laser gun. I also got lost trying to find Jared because I'm an idiot and I get lost very easily. When I eventually found him, I used a saved up critical to make his head explode with my sniper, then I just left because my work was done. After that I did a couple more Minutemen quests until I got the option to retake the castle. I made a quick stop to Diamond City to restock and I shot Kyle because he brought a pipe pistol to a laser fight. Then it was time to retake the castle. The beginning of the fight was pretty easy because after 4 cranks the laser musket really packs a punch. That's not to say that the Meyer Lurks were pushovers, but they couldn't handle the Neutron style. The annoying part was, unsurprisingly, having to reload after every single time I shot one of their eggs when I was clearing the outer wall. Now the Queen was another issue. I knew that she'd be a hard fight, but I didn't realize that the split beam didn't do any damage unless you were on top of what you were shooting at. Also at one point in the fight, I actually almost died to a hatchling. It's really nice to be humbled like that sometimes, you know? Eventually after a lot of shooting and a little bit of luck, the queen finally became past tense. After that, it was time to take a break from the Minutemen quest line and find Mr. Roboto. The Trigger Men aren't really a threat when you fight them one on one, the issue comes in when there's a bunch of them shooting you at once. That's why I tried to be sneaky throughout the vault. Emphasis on tried because that only lasted for a very short amount of time. Although I did get a nice headshot on Dino. I didn't even bother talking to Skinny Malone, my charisma was at once so I knew that there really wasn't a chance of passing that speech check. Also fun fact, this was the last time that I used the scoped laser musket. After I saved a robotic man, I went back to Red Rocket to make some changes to my short range gun, because I was getting fed up with the fact that the beam splitter has non-existent range, so I swapped out the beam splitter for a gyro lens. After that I broke into Frosted Flake's house and stole one of his cigars. Then I followed the dog to Fort Hagen and told Nick to frig off. I kept dog meat with me in Fort Hagen for reasons I don't really remember, sometimes you just want a buddy you know, sue me. Fort Hagen really wasn't much to talk about since the synths go down in a single shot. The main draw of the laser musket is being able to load multiple cells in a single shot, so cranking the musket four times will pretty much kill most enemies in one shot. I mean just look at this fight with Cheerios. I disintegrated that man. Then I decided to continue with the main quest, so my next stop was Good Neighbor. I made Finn headless and met my second favorite companion in the game. If you're wondering, number one is dog meat. Next was everyone's favorite unskippable cutscene. You know what made the simulation section of Fallout 3 good? The fact you can actually play the game and not just walk around on an aesthetically pleasing bridge. I did find out though that I had to find a green man in an equally green sea. I was originally gonna leave Nick haunted by Kellogg, but I needed him at the castle. 
One thing that I've been glossing over is that every single companion I've come across, I've sent over to the castle for the invasion later on in the story. I eventually made my way over to the big green monster, and no, not the one in Diamond City. I was tasked with hunting down a courser. Green tech was fairly easy. Honestly, the upgrades to my musket as well as the limitless ammo, I'm kind of unstoppable. The courser is pretty much Kellogg, but in a different jacket, so he goes down with one shot too. Then I decide to take out the gunners as well as the synth because no witnesses. Continuing on with my apparent bloodlust, I made my way over to the railroad and decimated that faction. I didn't have a reason to do this other than it's a video game, it doesn't matter, it's not real, and I can. Next up was talking to Ronnie Shaw to set up some artillery. Clearing out the basement wasn't bad. Sarge was kind of a pain in the ass, but like every scripted mini boss, there's always a way to cheese the fight. Then it was just a matter of setting up the artillery and testing it out. I'm sure artillery is useful if you actually build up settlements during a casual playthrough, but for my purposes, it was just a means to progress the story. And progress the story I did. I went back to Sanctuary to talk to Sturgis and built the teleporter to get into the Institute. After I faxed myself into the Institute, instead of going directly to Father, I played vault Tech's version of Pitfall Harry. After I got bored, I just waltzed in, shot my son in the face, and left. After that, it was just more Minuteman questing to move the story along. If it sounds like I'm glossing over a lot, it's because honestly, a lot of these fights are trivialized after I made these upgrades. Eventually, I did enough to have the Institute attack the castle. This is where sending all my companions there was a big brain move. I set up a bunch of turds, but they all pretty much died at the start of the fight. I have to say though, this was my favorite part of the entire run. Just wave after wave of synths, lasers flying everywhere. As set pieces in this game go, this is probably my favorite one. Also, the guy on the radio relaying the progress of the fight just makes it all the better. I mean, yeah, does the fight go on for a little bit longer than it should? Maybe, but it's cool. And just like that, the fight was over. All that was left to do was to go back into the Institute and blow it up. Look, I'm gonna level with you. At this point, I was kinda getting sick of the run. I sunk a lot of hours into this, and I had to redo a big chunk of the story because a three hour play session's recording got corrupted. So I kinda just ran past most of the fighting when I got inside. Although to make up for that, I did make sure to take out the two legendary synths at the reactor. After that, the run was pretty much over. I told Pinocchio that he wasn't a real boy and left him to die. The synth was cool with it, but Preston hated it. What a baby. What a baby. Then it was just a matter of pressing the pretty button and proving, yes, you can beat Fallout 4 with only a laser musket. All right, that run was a lot of fun. Keeping the laser musket updated as well as the arc jet ammo dump made every fight actually enjoyable. Also, I'm kind of frustrated that I know this isn't going to make the new video every other Saturday schedule that I want to set up. And that's mainly because my recording software did not want to cooperate with Fallout 4. I actually started a different challenge run, but that video got corrupted after one of the most difficult fights in the game. I'll probably come back to it, but not for a little bit. Anywho, thank you for watching. Let me know any challenges you'd like to see me do in the comment section below. This has been Red Handed Gaming, stay safe, and God bless.